Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to my first ever Q&A. Sorry that this video has been delayed. The main reason is because I find it quite awkward talking about myself for a long duration of time, and I'm not used to it. I did have to record this twice, but without further ado, let's get started. Question number one. Is your name actually Marily Mary V.O.? No, um, Marily Mary V.O. is just my YouTube channel name. My name is Mary. Why did you start YouTube? I started YouTube for a number of reasons. The main one being that, as many of you may know, I've been narrating horror stories here on YouTube for about a year and a half now on Wanzi's channel. And I guess through that, I saw that people actually enjoyed listening to my voice and were curious about the narrator. I guess I've always wanted to create a YouTube channel, but I never really knew what it was that I was supposed to do. I guess for a month, I gave it a try back in like 2018, where I tried to make poetry, but then I got discouraged quite easily and just gave up on that. But I don't know, I guess I finally decided to do it when I kept seeing all these encouraging comments that gave me the confidence to just take a leap of faith because it really gave me the final push to put myself out there and put my creativity and love of creepiness and my voice to good use. But yeah, I created this channel to have fun, to let loose and have this be an escape for me. Whether it be I'm, you know, doing some sort of voiceover work, or I'm connecting with other people, creating with other people, making music. It's just amazing that there is no limit to what I can do with this channel. And that truly is a blessing, and I thank you guys for you know, being so supportive of me. Do you draw your animations yourself? No, unfortunately I do not because I can't draw. Or rather, I can't draw well. White Horse Animations has been my animator since before I even knew which direction I wanted to take with my channel. Um, I was looking all over the place for an animator and magically came across him on Reddit, of all places. He was the one who animated my first story, which was Aswang. And what can I say, I'm truly lucky to have found someone that I can trust, who is easy to work with and just gets it. And recently, Chris has also started animating for my channel. I truly do appreciate all the connections that have come through YouTube. So it just goes to show that you should put yourself out there more and you'll be surprised with what the world will give you in return. What are you planning for the future? Well, I guess I have a lot of things planned for the future, but in terms of my channel, I have some ideas in my noggin that I hope will come to fruition one day. Um, for those who do not know, I am a musician, have been singing all my life, and went to school for opera. I would like to somehow incorporate music into my channel, but haven't really thought of how exactly I'll do that yet. Another thing I would like to do, once it is safe to do so, is travel and take you guys with me. I'd like to visit places, especially in Asia and Europe, with famous mythical creatures and urban legends, and share those stories with you. Also, at some point, I would like to have more animations, but as of right now, it it does take a lot of time, and yeah, it also takes money, and I'm currently just funding this all on my own. Once I'm at a place where the money I make from YouTube can cover things, I'd love to have more animations. Um, eventually, I would also like to have longer videos. 
about like 20 to 30 minutes long like actual cartoon episodes with voice acting what will you call your fans I think in the comment section of one of my videos, I called you guys my Merrily Creeps, or was it my Merrily Peeps? I don't quite remember. I mean, I thought it was a little corny, so I stopped. But, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. How do you have such a nice voice? Honestly, it is really nice. Plus, love your videos, and by the way, what microphone do you use? Well... Thank you so much for the huge compliment. I'm happy to hear you enjoy listening to me and also enjoy the videos. Honestly, it's a little overwhelming when I see compliments like that because, to be honest, I used to hate my speaking voice. But I don't know, I guess I eventually grew into my voice and getting into voiceover work really helped me embrace it. As for which microphone I use, right now I'm using my backup microphone, which is the Audio-Technica 2020. Um, I've had this one for two years, and the reason I'm using it now is because I am actually out in the open with sunlight, as opposed to being cooped up inside a closet or my vocal booth, because in case you didn't know, that's where voiceover artists who don't have access to a recording studio record. Um, it's how we get a clear and dead sound with no background noise. But yeah, when I record my stories, I actually record it in the dark, in a very tight space. And it's kind of creepy. But, you know, thought I'd have a change of scenery for this more chill sit-down video. My other microphone, which is my new baby, is the Shure SM7B. And I really do love that quality. I mean, I love the quality of this microphone too, and it's also pretty affordable. Um, yeah. Why do you like to make scary stories? Ooh, hmm. I like making scary stories because, in my opinion, they're the most thrilling to write and narrate. I mean, it's also crazy how like an everyday object or everyday situation can easily turn into a scary story. Like you could be walking down the street and then, you know, out of nowhere comes this grotesque creature. You're home alone and a serial killer comes knocking on your door. I mean, there are just so many things that can be covered within the genre, such as mythical creatures, urban legends, serial killers, crimes, paranormal activity, the list just goes on. And I guess it never gets boring and there are just so many stories out there to be shared. What's your favorite story out of all you've made so far? Um, that's a little tough. Hmm. I guess my favorite would have to be a tie between The Hag and Mananangal. Um, The Hag because it is a personal story of mine that happened to me and my best friend Christine when we were little girls. And then we saw this hag again when we were like in our college years. And we've only ever seen this hag when we were together, and I still have no idea why. And I haven't seen her for many years, so I don't know what she's up to. I don't know if she's bothering any other little children, but it was a really creepy situation. And Mananangal is another favorite because it is a family story and it's about a famous mythical creature in the Philippines. Um, I can't imagine ever seeing one, but I believe my family when they tell me that my great aunt saw one. But I don't know what to tell you. I guess the world really is just full of creepy shit. Have you made any personal horror stories? Yes. At the top of my head, um, The Hag is real, um, Haunted Dormitory is real, um, and The Subway one is real, and yeah. And then a bunch of them are family stories. 
Usually I will write in the description if it is written by me, but generally speaking, if a story is written by me, it's usually um, something that I experienced or something that a loved one has experienced. Do you like scary stuff? I do. However, I do also get scared quite easily. And sometimes I have to sleep with the lights on because I have a fear of waking up and seeing something staring at me. Which, in all due respect, I wouldn't be that angry about. Because I'm sure it would be karma for all the stories I narrate in the dark. Do you live in the Philippines or are you just Filipino? I live in New York City, was born and raised here, and I am full Filipino. My mom is from Iloilo City, and my dad is from Bukidnon in Mindanao. Unfortunately, I've only been to the Philippines once, and that was in 2016. But once it is safe to travel, you bet. I will definitely go back and I will try to learn more about the mythical creatures there. And also, it's always good to go back to the motherland. How old are you? Well, a lady never reveals her age. However, I will say that I am an adult and I have graduated from college. And yeah, I am of legal age. What do you do? Hmm. Well, I do a few things. Um, I'm a voiceover artist, I'm a singer, and I sing live on TV four days a week. But for the next two weeks, I'll pretty much sing every day because I'm covering for someone else. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. When will you do a face reveal? I get asked this question a lot, um, but I won't be doing one for some time. In the distant future, yes, I'd be down. But as of right now, no. Because I do like my privacy. I do like making sure that, you know, I'm safe and secure. And I'm a really introverted person as well. So privacy is everything. I want to protect myself on the internet as much as I possibly can for now. I mean, I've also gotten some weird ass messages on Instagram, so I just want to, you know, be safe. But who knows, maybe when I reach 100,000 subscribers, maybe when I reach a million subscribers, Who's to say? Maybe one day I'll just be like, guys, this is what I look like. Who knows? But I mean, it'll come in the future at some point. But if you want to quicken the process, you know, tell everyone you know to subscribe. Do you have a pet? Yes, I do. I have two cats and two dogs. I am an animal lover. 